Hi, my name is Brad Cunningham. Today I want to talk about binding directions in WPF and how you can control the direction and the flow of your data by using the mode property in the binding markup extension. The first thing I want to show you is a, a visual example of what I'm talking about here. So this is an image that describes the different binding directions that are available to you in WPF. So when you bind a value, what you're doing is you're binding a target object which is over here on the left, our binding target, which would be a dependency property, to a binding source, which would be just an object, a property of any type. So your binding target has to be a dependency property, um, something like the text property on a text block or a text box, those would be dependency properties. So that would be your binding target. This is where you want the source value to be displayed. And the binding source would be something like a view model property or, or any C-sharp class property. It can be of any type. And the data gets communicated between the source and the target through the binding pipeline, and that's what's described here in the middle. And you can move that data through the pipeline in one of um, three different directions, actually four, and uh, one that I'll talk about in a minute is not shown here. So the one-way direction takes the source value on the right and sends it through the binding pipeline to the target. Any changes to the target on the left do not get propagated back to the source. So this would be useful for read-only properties on your user interface. So something like a uh, stock ticker or a text block that is only getting updated from your, uh, your binding source but is, uh, is not editable in the UI. You'd use a one-way direction there. So your source object values may change over time, and the UI must reflect that, but the UI itself won't ever push any changes back to your source. That would be a one-way. The second option is two-way, and that's just like it says. It's a two-way street. So again, just like one-way, any changes to the source will get propagated to the target, but now also any changes to the target is going to get propagated back to the source. So it's a two-way street. And this would be appropriate for something like a text box where the user can type in some data and actually edit it. So maybe your source object has a starting value and then the user can then modify that value and you want the changes the user makes to propagate back to the source. You would use two-way. Uh, and then a third way to do it is called one-way to source, which is the reverse of one-way. So changes in the UI get pushed to the source object, but changes in the source object don't get pushed to the UI. And there's actually a fourth way that's not described here, and that's simply one time. And one time is the same direction as one way, but only happens at initialization. So the source may start with a default value, and that's propagated to the target, and then the binding effectively is disconnected at that point. Okay, so now that we've got a visual example, let me show you what this looks like in code. So I'm going to start with a simple object and I'm going to call this object a view model. We don't need to know too much about view models right now other than to know that this is our um, source object. So like we saw in the image, um, this is where our values will come from for a one-way binding uh, or a two-way binding. This will be considered our source. And I've created two properties here, one called one-way value, one called two-way value, just so I can show in the UI the difference between one-way and two-way bindings. And in the constructor of this object, I'm going to default both values to some string. So I'm going to start with some value in my source, and then I want to propagate it to the target. So let's take a look at this image again. So the source over here on the right is this view model object. So our source property is one way value or two way value, and I'm giving it some default text, and we're going to push that to our target. So let's take a look at our target now. Our target is going to be our main window, and I've got a series of text blocks and text boxes here. So I've got a text block, and the first one here I'm just going to throw some labels in so we can tell which one's which. And then on the first text block I'm binding to the one-way value, and I've set the mode property. This is the direction that the data flows in the binding pipeline. I've set the mode property to one-way on the first text block. This means that any changes to the source, which is our view model, will get propagated into this text block. But the text block itself, there's going to be no changes pushed back to the source. 
the second text block I've bound to the same one-way value, but I've set its mode to one time, which means take the initialized value and then disconnect the binding. And then I've created uh, our one-way value source. I've got a label here, and I've got a text box, and its text is bound to the one-way value, and I've set the update source trigger to property changed. What that means is that as I type characters in the text box, the the source property is going to be updated. So as I type in the text box, the default direction for text box is two-way. So that means that changes to the UI, changes to our target object, which is this text box, are going to get pushed back to the source. So as I type characters in the text box, the one-way value property on our view model class is going to get updated. As those updates occur, this one-way binding up here is going to get updated because the changes to the source will get propagated to the target in one way. So let's go ahead and run this. So you can see that our one-way starting value and our one-time starting value are the same and even our text box is the same. So this is the default value for our view model. Now if I come in here and I start editing and I type some more text, you'll see that the top value is updating but the second one is not. So what's happening there is the text box is sending a change to our view model and the one-way binding on the first text block is being updated. The second text block is a one-time value and you can see I can even change this completely. And so the second text block here, the one-time text block, is being updated only at the initialization and then the binding is disconnected. The one-way text block at the top is taking any changes from the source. So this text box below that I'm typing in is changing the source value and the one-way binding is updating based on those changes. So now let's take a look at what two-way means. So I'm going to uncomment these text blocks I've got below for two-way. In fact, what I'm going to do is comment out this one-way stuff up above so that we don't get too confused. We'll have only one thing on the screen at once. So we'll go ahead and comment that out. And now what I've got is I've got a, a label here to tell us that this is two-way, and I've got two text boxes. They're both bound to the two-way value, and I've got both of them update source trigger set to property change. Again, the update source trigger by default on a text box is when it loses focus, which means I'll type a bunch of characters and then I have to tab off to get it to change. Uh, I change it to property change, which means as I type characters, it updates. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And now I've got, you see both text box start with that starting value. And now any changes to the top will update the bottom. And I'll go into the bottom. Any changes to the bottom will update the top. And that's because this is a two-way street. So both text boxes are listening for changes to the source and updating. And you can see. And as I type in either one of them, they both update because they're both connected with a two-way street. So any changes from one text box in the UI pushes it back to the source, and then those changes get pushed back to anybody bound to it. So they're going both directions. Now if I were to change this first text box to, to one-way instead of two-way, now let's see what happens. So now if we type in the bottom, you can see the top is still updating because the bottom text block, the bottom text box is pushing a change to our view model and the one-way binding up above is updating. Now if I actually type some data in this top one, you can see the bottom one no longer is changing. And that's because any changes to the UI do not get propagated back to the source because our mode is one-way. So let's go to the bottom again, make some changes, and you can see the top one now is updating completely. This is two-way on the bottom. However, if I come up here and add more, and I say this is, you see that the bottom is not getting these changes. And that's because the first text box is one way. So changes on the UI don't affect it. The second text box is two way, which means changes in the UI get propagated back to the source and then the binding up above gets updated. So you can see that you can use the mode property on the binding markup extension to control the direction in which your data flows. And let's close by taking a look at this picture once again. 
and this really describes the directions of the binding pipelines. So you can see in this in this image, you can see the directions once again. Our binding source, again, is our view model, our class that we called view model. It's just a normal C sharp class with properties of any type. In this case, they're strings. Our binding target is a dependency object with dependency properties. In this case, it's text boxes, and their text property is our binding target. And we control the flow of the data between the source and the target by using the mode property in the binding markup extension. So let's take a look again, this view model class, this is our source. Remember we just, just a normal C sharp class. It's got normal string properties on them and we've set a default value. Our binding target is our text box and it's text property is a dependency property and we've set up a binding to the property, our string property in our source, and we control the flow of data by using the mode, one way versus two way. And once again, there's our, our descriptions. Okay, that's all for binding direction in WPF.